You've got to be that way. Hallelujah. God's calling you for it. It's calling you. 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 It's calling every one of you here. An opportunity set before you. An open door. In all your tribulations, my God, you don't know what I'm going through, preacher. He's trying to get you to reach forth to those things which are before. He wants you pressing toward the mark for that prize, the prize, the prize. Don't you know that all runneth in a race, but only one winneth the prize? That's one, one mind, one cord, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God, Father of all, through all, and in us all. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and only one went at the prize. For the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, for the mark. No, I just want the prize. No, I'm going to give you the mark for the prize. I want the Son of Man. No, you're going to see the sign of the Son of Man. Come on. Somebody says, what is the sign? Somebody says, I think it's the sign of the prophet Jonas. Oop, you missed it. Well, I believe the sign's this. I've done this for about 33 years. I've gone behind doors with preachers and closed doors, and I've heard them all talk, throw it out. But it ain't going to come by consultation of men's preachers getting together. It ain't going to come by the saints of God talking one to another. It's going to come by the Holy Ghost. And I don't care if it's a 10-year-old snot-nosed kid or a 95-year-old apostle. I'm going to receive it. I want it. See, that persecution and tribulation that you endure causes your faith to grow exceedingly and a charity to abound one, to, one toward another. We're bound to thank God for you, brethren, and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token, a manifest mark, a manifest sign, a manifest signet, a manifest signature that God's in it. A manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Problem is, God's people doesn't know judgment. Do this, sister. Don't know it. Somebody says, I know judgment. You think you run across a pothole out here in the road and you call judgment down upon the city of Bogalusa, and that's judgment. They should have fixed the roads. Don't they know I'm a man of God or I'm a woman of God? I call judgment down upon this city. That's not judgment. That's not judgment at all. Or you hurt my feelings, I'll call judgment down upon you. That's not judgment. <laughs> the righteous judgment. The righteous judgment of God. See, the stork and crane observe the time of their coming. So does the swallow observe the time of his coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Seek righteousness. Seek judgment. It may be that you will be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. That's Zephaniah 2, 2. We don't know that this night is so far spent and the day is at hand. Which is a manifest token. What? All your persecutions and tribulations that you're in. It's a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Judgment of God. That you might be accounted worthy of the kingdom of God. That's not even the kingdom of heaven yet. The kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Somebody said, I don't understand why I'm suffering. He's wanting you in the kingdom of God to come forth in the fullness of him. Going up into a full man. Learning obedience through the things which you suffer. Jesus, our captain of our salvation, was made perfect through 
sufferings. How do you think it's going to be with the body of Christ? The blessing plan? Worldly blessings? Devilish, sensual, having not the Spirit of God with great swelling words, making merchandise of you, prophesying peace, peace when there is no peace? prophets of Baal and that's all you have in the land today woe be unto the prophets that prophesy lies out of their own heart and have seen nothing your prophets are like the foxes in the desert where they have not gone up into the gap neither have they met up, made up the hedge for the children of God, for the children of people, the children of thy people to stand in the day of the battle of the Lord. The day, the day that will not come upon us as a thief in the night, as it will come upon all the children of night. Because it's a day of darkness, a day of gloominess, and gross darkness shall cover the people. But you're not of that night. You're children of the day. You're children of light. That day will not come upon you as a thief in the night. For the ones that do not go God, it will be a day of darkness, a day of gloominess, and a woeful, woeful day. Oh, woe worth the day! For the day, the day of the Lord coming as a destruction from the Almighty, so shall it come. A consumption decreed, a destruction decreed upon the whole earth. And though Noah, Daniel, and Job stood before thee, yet they would deliver only their righteous souls, and neither their wives nor their children would be able to enter in. Don't think your preacher, your pastor, your wife, or your husband's going to get you in on their coattails. You won't be able to deliver nobody but yourself in that day. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job stood before me, they would deliver only but their own souls. When I set my four sword judgments upon the earth, the sword, famine, pestilence, and noisome beast. You know why it's going like this? Because some of you are in the balance. It's going so slow that the Lord will not allow me. Normally, you know me. Elder, you know. It comes out like machine gun bullets. Some of them say, well, Brother Beard, I wish you'd slow down a little bit. You would buried us about one hour ago. But it's gone so slow here. Because some of you are in the balance. I've gone so slow here, I think I'm in reverse. And it's because you are in the balance. You. God right now is sifting the nations. And not the least grain will fall to the ground. But all the sinners of my people. I will destroy by my sword, which say, no evil shall prevent nor overtake me. God said in that day, the man speaketh presumptuously, presumptuously in his heart, saying that I shall see no evil. I will see no tribulation. I will see no birth pangs. I will see no sorrow. God said, mine anger shall smoke against that man, and I will blot out his name out of the book of life. Somebody said, but well, you don't understand. I'm baptized in Jesus' name, talking in tongues, and I got the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to you. Your name had to be in the book of life to get blotted out. You get in the book of the Revelation, you start running your mouth about the things of God. 
sealed. The seven seals of God are the seals of his heartstrings. And you break those seals unworthily. And you pronounce a lie and belie the Lord. He will destroy you. You're dealing with the heart of God. When you get into the book of the Revelation, you're dealing with a huge powder click on a short, short fuse. And everything you say better be right, right on. This token of the righteous judgment of God, that you might be accounted worthy in all these persecutions and tribulations that you endure, that you might be accounted worthy of the kingdom of God, worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to render tribulation to them that trouble you. And you which are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord God shall be revealed from heaven with his holy angels. And I told you last night, you think those angels are created angels with wings flying around in the air. <laughs> those angels are the clouds. The clouds, for the Lord himself to send in the clouds with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, with power and great glory in the clouds. The Lord went to heaven in the clouds. And the Lord shall also come in like manner. This same Jesus you see ascending into heaven shall also come in like manner. And he went up in the clouds, receiving him up into heaven. Acts, the first chapter. And he will also come in like manner. The clouds. Wherefore we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. The clouds of glory, the Shekinah, that overshadowed Peter, James, and John. <laughs> the resurrection saints that Jesus raised immediately after his resurrection went over to the dead saints and raised some of their dead bodies out of the graves and said, come on, boys, let's walk through Jerusalem. And they, Jesus and the ones he rose from the dead walked through the city. Seeing their dead bodies raised from the grave, Jesus showing that he is the resurrection and the life. They received their change right then. They didn't die again. Well, where are they? Are they still walking upon the earth? No, they went up with Jesus. Where? In the clouds. Jude 14 said, The Lord shall descend from heaven with 10,000 of his saints. He will appear with the clouds of heaven, 10,000 of his saints. When the Lord, in flaming fire, with his holy angels, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will be destroyed with everlasting destruction from the presence of God and the glory of his power. When he comes to be revealed in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, for our testimony among you was believed, in that day. Wherefore, I pray that you would be accounted worthy of this calling. Does that mean everybody's going to go in? I pray that you might be accounted worthy of this calling. Worthy of that calling. That the name of Jesus might be glorified in you and you in him, Amen. even by the grace of our Lord Jesus. 2 Thessalonians 1. The manifest token of the righteous judgment of God is a sign of the Son of Man. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sign of the Son of Man appear in heaven with crowds and power and great glory, and he shall send his angels. 
and they will gather together his elect.